Hi guys. It is turning into a cold winter night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We have the heater going. Uh, all of this, it, it is now Wednesday, June 17th. We are four days away from summer. There is some hilarious knee slapping stories about some heat wave going on in this country. I am freezing. The little dog is shivering. We've got the heater going. Anyway, but maybe partly to warm up here, we're going to have an easy chronicle of the collapse tonight. We are going to do some China bashing. It is, uh, has it been a while? Since I've done some China bashing, we've got two stories. We're going to look at the latest update about, the, you know, the latest uh, building nuclear disaster going on over there. But first, we're going now. Manga Bay, I mentioned Manga Bay's spin on this story. I'm not sure whose spin this is because the print is so tiny. I cannot see, but right here on... The mainstream media right now, you can find uh, this article, China's maritime fleet uses predatory fishing practices to feast on smaller countries. And anybody who does not understand, I don't know how noisy this is, as much as I don't want to turn this heater off, uh, this is... Well, if it's not directly part of the Belt and Road Initiative, it is certainly uh, it is certainly involved a close cousin. All right, for anyone who does not understand this, we're going to do some Doomer 101. Uh, if you can't understand this story, I'm not sure you're ready for the more nuanced stories from the Doomosphere. Let's just get into some straight-ahead, well-deserved. China bashing. <clears throat> China has spent decades overfishing its waters and decimating its sea life. You know, like every other country, of course. Uh, now, with nowhere left to go, the country's massive fishing fleet has pushed itself into international waters and at times resorted to predatory and illegal fishing, price, fishing practices in other countries' coastal domains. Can you believe this? China typically targets small nations that cannot defend themselves or lack the resources to put up much of a fight. So far, I haven't heard a story about Chinese fishing fleets off the U.S. coast. Uh, the East Asian behemoth, China is now being called, I, as I say, I don't know which right-wing media this is, but they're on target. The East Asian behemoth has gotten away with so much of this activity that it fishes as though the rules do not apply to them. And to this day, it sends its massive floating militia into protected coastal waters. In, 21, in 2010, the European Union implemented an indirect enforcement system to curb overfishing that has proven effective in prompting sweeping changes in countries such as Cambodia, Thailand, Taiwan, the Philippines, and Vietnam. And guys, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm not going to get into this rant, but if anybody for one minute believes one word of that sentence, okay, Obviously, you are not doing your homework. Uh, yeah, that 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 is an absolute. That's absolute crap. Uh, that sentence. Okay, but we're not here to talk about Cambodia, Thailand, Taiwan, the Philippines, and Vietnam. We're here to talk about the East Asian behemoth. But China 
which has carried out the lion's share of overfishing and has a documented track record of bad maritime behavior, has pretty much gotten off scot-free, and that is entirely true. Not facing consequences has only emboldened Beijing's quest for maritime domination. This is, uh, oh, it's the Washington Examiner that we're reading here. Okay, if that means anything to you. Uh, this is foreign relations expert, whatever that means, Gordon Chang. Quote, China will continue to take fish until the international community imposes costs of illegal fishing. So far, countries have shown great reluctance to protect their waters. So yes, the Chinese are criminals, but we allow them to be. Close quote, and that's probably because we are eating a lot of the fish that they're catching. It's not like, uh, for all I know, some of this tilapia. Well, the tilapia wouldn't be from the ocean. Uh, that the tilapia that I'm eating is probably from Vietnam. I'm taking a wild guess. Uh, China has not only overfished the hotly contested South China Sea but its vessels has, have also been spotted as far as Africa and Central America. And Manga Bay talks about this a lot. I just talked, shared that story last week on Manga Bay talking about uh, China off the coast of Latin America. The country's fishing fleet, this is what Manga Bay was talking about, uh, in their story last week, the country's fishing fleet has been known to go in to protected waterways in the dead of night, lower their identifying flags, turn off equipment to avoid detection, and take fish. China, as, China is ranked <clears throat> as the world's worst nation in the 2019, I love the name of this, this is the Illegal, Unreported, and Unregulated Fishing Index. We're coming in the in last place uh, and is regularly implicated in overfishing, targeting of endangered shark species, illegal intrusion of jurisdiction, and false licensing and catch documentation as well as forced labor. Some of the most egregious acts include fishing in the Galapagos Islands. That was a big story when they invaded the Galapagos Islands last year. A UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Pacific Ocean. The islands <coughs> are an oasis of ocean biodiversity with more than 20% of its marine species found nowhere else on Earth. So it was noteworthy when a vast armada of Chinese fishing vessels just off the islands logged a staggering 73,000 hours of fishing during just one month and pulled up thousands of tons of squid that are essential to the diet of Galapagos fur seals and endangered hammerhead sharks. China also scooped up tons of tuna and billfish that contribute to the local economy, according to an analysis by the marine conservation group Oceana. And uh, Manga Bay reported a lot on that last year. Uh, <clears throat> nearly 300 Chinese vessels accounted for 99% of visible fishing just outside the island's waters in one month. Um, quote, 
This is Marlene Valentine from Oceana, quote, this massive and ongoing fishing effort of China's fleet threatens the Galapagos Islands, the rare species that only call it home and everyone that depends on it for food and livelihoods. So now we're going to go over to Africa. China has also made its presence known in Sierra Leone, an African country still recovering from a lengthy civil war. China accounts for 75% of Sierra Leone's industrial fleet with one trawler pulling in up to 100 tons of fish per day. But th those are the legal ships. They're legally allowed to pull up 100 tons of fish per day. And I don't know whether that 100 tons includes all of that, quote, bycatch. And, and th those are the legal ones. But it is the illegal, unchecked vessels that are doing the most damage. Catches are going undetected because not all boats are fitted with tracking technology. And Sierra Leone lacks the resources to enforce any regulations with just one single boat responsible for monitoring 400,000 square miles. Uh, anyway, let's move on from Sierra Leone. Uh, China's fishing fleet is also targeted Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. Chinese vessels along South America's Pacific coast have been accused of disabling their public tracking devices and engaging in suspect practices, which again was that story in Manga Bay on Friday. Um, in November, the countries issued a joint statement announcing they would combine their limited resources to, quote, prevent, discourage, and jointly confront, close quote, any illegal fishing operations. And of course, uh, as I've mentioned before, flaring tensions in the South China Sea between Beijing and the Philippines have threatened the survival of Filipino fishermen for several years. Uh, in an act of defiance, the Philippine government took a big step in opposing China by telling its vast fishing fleet last month to ignore Beijing's annual fishing ban in the South China Sea. China and the Philippines, along with four other countries, are locked in a heated sovereignty dispute over the contested waters. Uh, China is also getting some surprising pushback from smaller islands in the South China Sea, such as the Republic of Palau, a Pacific Island nation ally of Taiwan, mm -hmm. has not only irritated Beijing with its ties to Taiwan, but also angered China after it detained one of its fishing vessels and six smaller boats. Uh, officials in Palau have accused Chinese boats of harvesting sea cucumbers in its waters. And I've talked about sea cucumbers before. Anyway, guys, I could go on, but I think we get it. Uh, but a couple of you have asked me why I am not covering, I don't know if I'm still talking to myself, the little red record button on my camera has been disabled, so I don't know if I'm sitting here talking to myself or not, although I'm talking to myself even if it is being recorded. Okay, several of you have asked why I'm not, uh, 
talking more about the latest uh, building nuclear catastrophe over there. And so I'm going to uh, update you. This is hot off the presses from AP. China says nuclear fuel rods damaged, but no radiation leak. There you go. If the Chinese government says there is no radiation leak after admitting that nuclear fuel rods have been damaged in one of their uh, power plants, well, I guess you have two choices. You can believe them or not. Take it away, Associated Press. All right. A Chinese nuclear power plant near Hong Kong had five broken fuel rods in a reactor, but no radioactivity leaked. The government said today in its first confirmation of the incident that prompted concern over the facility's safety. Uh, so they've been... I, you, you can't quite say they have been denying it, uh, over the past few days, they have just not been admitting it. They've just been silent. Well, today, they have admitted that that some of these uh, rods, these famous rods, fuel rods, uh, have broken, but no radiation has leaked. We can all go back to sleep. Radiation rose inside the number one reactor of the Taishan nuclear power plant, but was contained by barriers that functioned as planned. The Chinese Ministry of Ecology and Environment said on its social media account, the Chinese Ministry of Ecology and Environment, if I had to think of one of the most uh, oxymoronic, uh, that, that, that is one of the, the hilarious knee slapper contradiction in terms, the Chinese Ministry of Ecology and the Environment. Obviously, they're not going to lie. Uh, the Hong Kong government <coughs> said it was watching the plant and asking officials in China for details after its French co-owner. So this is France and China, so now France. Uh, after its French co-owner on Monday <coughs> reported increased, quote, noble gases in the reactor, Experts said that suggested fuel rods had broken and leaked radioactive gas produced during nuclear fission. Uh, anyway, so the, uh, but the Chinese government, quote, there is no problem of radioactive leakage into the environment. Yes, <clears throat> it did say that radiation in the reactor's coolant increased, but that was within, quote, the allowable range. The allowable range. There you go. Uh, anyway, and it goes on. The ministry said regulators would oversee measures to control radiation levels but gave no details. <clears throat> the Taishan plant, which began commercial operation in December 2018, is owned by China Guangdong Nuclear Power Group and Electricité de France. <clears throat> A second reactor began operating in 2019. Uh, and then it breaks down all of this. You know, this is one of these new uh, fail safe. You know, there's no way that these new super duper things can ever go wrong. The ministry denied a report 
by CNN that regulators increased the level of radiation allowed outside the power plant to avoid shutting it down. Uh, yeah, so the reason it's allowable, so I guess obviously they are uh, denying that. And what does the International Atomic Energy Agency said Wednesday that the China Atomic Energy Authority reported the reactor's, quote, containment integrity is maintained and there is no environmental concern. There you go. <clears throat> China is one of the biggest users of nuclear power and is building more reactors at a time when few other governments plan new facilities because the cost of solar, wind, and other alternatives is plunging. Yes, Chinese leaders see nuclear power as a way to reduce air pollution and demand for imports of oil and gas, which they deem a security risk. China has 50 operable nuclear reactors. It is now building 18 more, according to the World Nuclear Association. Uh, Previously, the Taishan facility leaked a, quote, small amount of radioactive gas on April 9th. The Nuclear Safety Administration said on its website that event was level zero or without safety significance. And there you go. You be the judge. Uh, are we looking at the latest uh, nuclear catastrophe in the making or not? I'm going to say, I'm going to predict this story is going to quietly disappear. Uh, it will be flashing around uh, the mainstream media for two or three days, and then you will never hear it mentioned again, but I'm sure you can find all sorts of uh, YouTubes out there uh, screaming the alarm. But uh, that's the report from here. And with that, I need to go feed my dog, turn the heater back on, and go throw another blanket on my bed on this cold winter night in June. Uh, I do not know why the entire country isn't moving to Ithaca, New York. You know, New York lost more population last year than any state. 126,000 people moved out of New York, uh, while on the other end of the spectrum, 376,000 uh, people moved to the great state of Texas where I moved out of to come here. 376,000 people moving to Texas where I was going to do a hilarious story that the Texas power grid is uh, getting ready to start blacking out because of the heat four months after it failed because it was so cold. The Texas Electra Electric Reliability Council and I love that. The Texas Electricity Reliability Council. Anyway, that's another rant for another day. Bye, guys. Are you enjoying that heater? Here's a pop. I can finally warm up on this freezing June day. Bye, guys.